Most serial killers are found eventually. No matter how cunning they may be, just one mistake, a barely noticeable trace of DNA or a glimpse of their car or even face on CCTV can get them put where they belong, behind bars. Psychopathic murderers always get their just desserts, right? Not necessarily. In the mid-aughts over the span of several years, skinny young girls began disappearing near the Orenburg Chelyabinsk and Samara Orenburg highways in central Russia. These sections of road are kilometers of flat land surrounded by endless dense forests, and in winter, everything is covered with snow and ice, and the temperature drops to minus 30 degrees Celsius. If you miss your bus, even in the summer they run irregularly, there is no waiting around for the next one. You'll have to hitchhike. Most often, the girls who disappeared were last seen catching a ride or walking along the road. Some of them may have been involved in sex work, and it is unfortunately often the case when they disappeared, no one looked for them. They just went for a walk, they'll come back, the policeman would say to grief-stricken relatives. Only none of the missing girls ever returned. Meanwhile, folks foraging for mushrooms in the woods would uncover human remains, usually the bodies of young women who had disappeared months or years earlier. The bodies were mutilated, and most had been subjected to sexual violence before their deaths. There was no evidence at the crime scenes. Most of the missing girls were from villages and towns near the highways, such as Orsk, Novosergeevka, Kamenozorny, Tozbulak, and Mazarovka. Of all these, Orsk was the largest. Orenburg Oblast, Russia, is where Europe meets Asia, an area covered with forests, fields, and farmland. About 200,000 people live in Orsk, just a few kilometers away from the border with Kazakhstan. The city has colleges and universities, several hospitals, churches, a thriving musical scene. In general, it's an ordinary city in the Russian provinces, far from Moscow and St. Petersburg. Only now, the notoriety of the missing girls has put a stain on the city's reputation. Rumors began spreading of serial killer, maybe more than one. It was believed that there was a whole gang kidnapping young girls into sex slavery and stealing their organs. The police in Orsk had their own theory. They didn't think there was a gang hunting for women, but in all likelihood, one person was responsible. The problem was, they couldn't catch him. One hypothesis was that the killer was a trucker who knew the highway near Orsk well. A pattern in the murders could be seen soon enough, but there were no clues. We'll discuss that after a quick ad break. When preparing material for stories like this one, I often have to access websites that are only available for certain regions. This can even happen with YouTube videos or Netflix documentaries, which can be restricted for some countries because of licensing agreements. Of course, to cover all the important details regarding the case, I need a solution that helps lift those restrictions. So that's when I want to mention my go-to VPN service called NordVPN. With a single click, NordVPN allows you to alter your virtual location and access content from anywhere in the world at the same time ensuring your online protection. With NordVPN, you don't have to sacrifice the speed of your internet connection because NordVPN is the fastest VPN in the market. Get an exclusive deal on NordVPN by following the link in the description of this video. By clicking the link, you not only support my channel, but also get four months for free on the two-year plan with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And now, let's get back to the video. In the village of Pabeda on the outskirts of Orsk, one Saturday evening, 18-year-old Olga Zhirovlyova decided to meet with a friend. It was the summer of 2012, and she left her house after 8 p.m. Pabeda was separated from the rest of the city by huge industrial zones, and to get to the center, you had to take a 15 to 20-minute bus ride. At 9 p.m., Olga called her friend to say there was no public transport and she would flag down a car. Just 10 minutes later, she called again, telling her friend that she had gotten into a car and was on her way. However, Olga never showed up. Her friend called her, but her phone was turned off. Olga never mentioned the make or number of the car, so it was impossible to find out what had happened. 
The police didn't particularly bother searching for her, believing she just ran away. A few days after she disappeared, the first witness came forward. One resident of Pabeta reported that she had seen a young woman who fit August's description get into a large white car. The witness didn't know anything about cars, but it became clear that she was talking about a foreign SUV. There were only 11 such cars in the region, and only two in Orsk. The police called the owners of both cars for questioning. 55-year-old Valery Andreev had a white Sung Young. He also had an impeccable reputation. He never had any problems with the law. He was a married man and a father of two boys, and he didn't drink or smoke. When he told the police he was a truck driver, their ears perked up. He almost always worked alone without a partner. He was respected at work. In 15 years, he had received only three speeding tickets and never had a single accident. When asked about the evening Olga disappeared, Andreev just shrugged. He didn't remember, but he was probably at home watching TV as usual. According to him, he spent his free time with his wife. Andreev was released. Investigators had no evidence to detain him, but alarm bells were going off in their heads. Despite his reputation, he fit the description of the killer, and he most often drove along the very routes where the girls disappeared. They also examined his car and found traces of blood, which apparently he had tried to wash off. Now they decided to call him back for questioning, but he never came. It was his turn to disappear. His wife told the police that the morning after the first interrogation, he had left and never returned. The last time he called his wife, he said, let them find the real killer first. And then his trail went cold. Forensic experts went to the company where Andreev worked and asked for his truck. During the search, traces of DNA were found, all of which belonged to girls who had disappeared near the highway. How could they have missed it? Resentment was a good word to describe how a lot of people felt about how this case was handled. Andreev's colleagues were interviewed, and they mentioned other suspicious things. In the mid-2000s, he had refused to take on a partner and became quiet and withdrawn. For that reason, he could drive no further than Ural and Volga regions, not far from Orenburg Oblast. Women's things, hairpins, condoms, and underwear were often found in the truck after Valery Andreev's shift by other drivers. Rumors began to spread about him that he was into women of ill repute and often used their services. The truth was, of course, much worse. But the other drivers stubbornly preferred to believe the more banal explanation. The items were pretty strange, because everyone knew Andreev as an exemplary family man. His colleagues just joked about it and dropped the subject. It was hard to believe such an even-tempered man could be a killer, but the hairpins, jewelry, and underwear were trophies of his crimes. His wife Tatiana didn't believe he was guilty either, she tore down the flyers with his picture that had been plastered all over the city, but any doubts that the police had disappeared after they inspected his garage on the outskirts of the city where he kept his white car, the same one that had taken Olga Zhuravlyova to an unknown destination just a month earlier. The DNA of the missing girls was everywhere, and there were washed out traces of Olga's blood in the car along with his own DNA. And there was something even more terrible on the walls. From the case file. Neighbors in the garage cooperative said that Andreev regularly whitewashed his garage from the inside. That seemed strange. In the basement, under the garage, experts opened a layer of plaster. There were many samples of foreign DNA on the walls, as well as traces of blood that the Orsk maniac was trying to hide. It turns out that he did not kill some of his victims immediately. He brought them to the garage, kept them in the basement, beat them, raped them, and only then strangled them. The bodies were taken out of town. Nobody heard screams from the garage according to neighbors, or perhaps they simply didn't want to hear them. There was no insulation in the garage walls. In total, DNA traces of eight victims were found in the basement, seven women and one schoolgirl, all of whom had disappeared near the highway between 2006 and 2012. He had a well-thought-out and simple plan. He saw a woman waiting for a ride by the road, offered her a lift, and then attacked. 
he could easily put them at ease, play the kind old man acting like a father figure. His honest blue eyes and calm voice put them at ease so they would get into his car without a second thought. The total number of victims was probably much higher than eight. In the years when he was prowling that stretch of highway, about a hundred girls disappeared there. But he didn't only kill on the job. Judging by what happened to Olga Zhuravyova, he used his own car in his free time, stalking the streets of Orsk for a suitable victim. His involvement in Olga's murder was proven by his mobile phone. According to the investigation, both of their phones were in the same place before hers was turned off. Olga was finally found a year and a half after disappearing. A worker discovered human remains covered with a thin layer of earth in the ill-fated forest belt. A skull and fragments of bones were all that remained of a beautiful young girl. As for many others, their bodies were forever swallowed up by the forest, and the criminal disappeared himself without telling anyone where he hid them. After Andreev's escape, law enforcement in Orsk had a lot to answer for. It was Olga's parents who found the witness who saw the white SUV, not the police. The authorities did absolutely nothing to try to explain why a girl who had never left home for any long period of time would suddenly run away. An investigator later apologized to Olga's family for letting the killer go after his first interrogation. If he had been detained on the spot, he would be in jail, and he's a free man to this day. Yes, you heard that right. It's 2023 and he still hasn't been caught. So who is he? And what do we know about him? Valery Andreev was born on April 10th, 1957, in the small village of Shalkarsky in Orenburg Oblast. He learned to drive a truck and moved to Orsk, where he started a family and got a job. Little is known about his life, he'd always been a private person with few friends. There was a nationwide search for the Orsk maniac, flyers with his photograph were distributed, and people claimed to see him in various regions. His ordinary appearance worked to his advantage. He looked like a thousand other men his age, and nothing about him stood out, except for his gold teeth and a scar from an operation on his stomach. For 15 years, he was seen in places like Kaliningrad and St. Petersburg, where he tried to kidnap a little girl. One student saw him on a bus in Odinsova near Moscow in 2022. She noticed his gold teeth and gaze. He was shedding her up the whole ride. Afterward, she went to the police after seeing his face on a flyer at her university. These flyers hang in stores, the post office, and lampposts to this day. Muscovites see him every now and then, and it is said that he settled in Odinsova and he's even been sighted in the elite suburb of Rublovka a neighborhood of celebrities and millionaires, but he is still on the run. Today, there are a lot of theories about where he may be hiding. Some investigators think it wouldn't make sense for him to hide in Moscow, a city covered with cameras with facial recognition capabilities. So if Andreev decided to move permanently to Moscow or the Moscow suburbs, one careless step could put him behind bars. Some believed he fled to Kazakhstan, but that was never confirmed. It was also rumored that he went to prison under a different name on forged documents, but he was never found in prison databases either. It's also possible, if unlikely, that Andreev died and was buried somewhere in an unmarked grave. Most likely, he's still out there, living just outside of Moscow. Young mothers post his picture on WhatsApp and Facebook with descriptions of recent run-ins with him on the street, and he may well still be killing. Valery Andreev is currently 62 years old, height 173 centimeters, oval face, straight nose, straight hair, short and dark with some gray, thin lips, thin lips, straight chin, flat earlobes, seven teeth on the upper and lower jaws have gold dental crowns. He also has an abdominal scar after stomach ulcer surgery. Valery Andreev, the Orsky maniac, is one of the 10 most wanted criminals in Russia, and he's even on Interpol's list. They're searching for him all over the world. The Ministry of Internal Affairs is offering a 1 million ruble award for assistance in his capture, and Orenburg Oblast will add another 500,000 rubles. They are searching for him in Moscow Oblast based on the testimony of a student from Odinsova. 
and new APBs have also been released showing how Andreev's appearance might vary depending on whether he has grown a beard, wears glasses, or gone grey or completely bald. Also, according to the APB, he's very dangerous and possibly armed. His wife Tatiana still does not believe the accusations against her husband, and she tells her friends that Andreev still calls her, although how and if this is possible is questionable. She still works as a nurse in the surgery department of a hospital, lives in Orsk, and is trying to convince everyone of his innocence, despite all the damning evidence. His older son denounced him immediately. The younger one also fell under suspicion because he would sometimes drive his father's white car, but it has been established that it was Valery who was driving when Olga disappeared. Until Andreev is found, one can only hope that justice will prevail, and no matter how old he is, he will end up in prison. What if he's killing now in some remote Russian region? According to psychiatrists, killers rarely change. All the police can do is hope that he will make a mistake that will lead them to him. All ordinary people can do in Russia or around the world is scan the crowds for this unassuming man in their city. Who knows where Valery Andreev went after his hasty departure from Orsk? His drab appearance lets him hide in a crowd like a chameleon. Maybe you've seen him yourself. I hope that they catch him and solve all of his crimes. In Russia, very little information has been disclosed about the victims, so unfortunately, I can't say much about them to preserve their memory. However, if anything changes, you'll definitely get an update here. If you liked this video, check out similar stories on my channel, subscribe, and share with your friends. As always, stay safe.